Chunk, 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 Hi everybody, John Yasa here back with another exciting edition of Practical MDO. Today we're talking about computing derivatives of implicit functions. Now a lot of people tell me, John, my deepest fear is that someday I will need to compute the derivative of an implicit function. But don't worry, it's not actually that tough. Let's talk about it. So it does seem scary. It does seem like something kind of confusing and we're gonna work through it. The main takeaway that you need to remember for computing the derivatives of implicit functions is that you simply want the derivatives of the residual with respect to the inputs and the residual with respect to the outputs. It's not that you want the derivatives of the outputs with respect to the outputs. That doesn't necessarily make sense. I'll walk you through what this means with a step-by-step -step code tutorial in this case, but also introduce kind of the theoretical background before we get to the implementation. This lesson is one that's maybe, you know, 50% OpenMDO focused, but also generally applicable to anybody who's using implicit functions of some sort, even outside of OpenMDAO. Now this has to do with the differentiation subcategory in this course. So if there's one idea that I want to get into your head from this lesson, if there's just one idea from this lesson that makes it in there, it's that we need derivatives of the residual functions. Let's get into the details here of getting the residual function derivatives and, and what that means. So I can't and will not go through all of the theoretical background here, but I would like to give a shout out to section 6.9, especially in engineering design optimization. It does a fantastic job of having multiple graphs, figures, and kind of equations that explain what we're trying to do here. It shows what a residual equation looks like and what it means to get partial derivatives of those equations. If you're going to be working with implicit derivatives, I, I highly recommend checking that out in detail. So first, let me kind of anchor our discussion by talking about explicit functions. These are easier because we just have an output and an input, and we just need the derivatives of the outputs with respect to the inputs. But like I've been saying for implicit functions, we need derivatives of the residual expression with respect to both the inputs and outputs. Okay, let's, let's walk through what this means kind of mathematically. In general, we have the residual equations and we're trying to get these to zero. So it's R of our state vector equal to zero. Now I'm gonna do an, an actual example here. And this example is for a reason. It's the one that I'll show you later in code. But for right now, I'll just look at a quadratic formula. So we have the residual values uh, dependent on A, B, C, and X, where A, B, and C are coefficients and X is kind of a state variable. Here we're trying to get this to zero. This is kind of the classical idea of solving for a quadratic equation. So when you see this residual function here, we're actually just getting derivatives of this r function. So partial r, partial x is what we're looking for. Now, additionally, x in this case is the state variable, whereas a, b, and c are just inputs to it. So we also need partial r, partial a, and partial b, and partial c. Those are a little bit easier to think about than with partial x. So all that being said, let me kind of walk through this using some of the OpenMDO code as an example. Now, if I can show you something from the docs without me reinventing the wheel, I will do that. So that's what we're doing here. Let's first start with an explicit component. And I want to have this as kind of an anchoring point, a foundational point where getting derivatives of an explicit component is a little bit simpler than an implicit component. Here I have the OpenMDO docs for explicit components, and I'm going to scroll down until we see the compute partials. Okay, so this component here is simply taking the length and width of a rectangle and computing the area. Length times width equals area. Awesome. Compute partials then, we need to have the area with respect to length and the change in area with respect to width. In this case, it's pretty darn simple. It's simply, okay, width and length because they're multiplying each other. All that being said, the compute partials looks like this. It's your outputs with respect to your inputs. If I scroll up here and take a look, okay, length and width are inputs and area is an output. Slick, that's pretty easy. But let's transition over here and talk about implicit components. So an implicit component has a few different methods, which I won't necessarily explain in full detail here because the docs do a great job of explaining that, but I simply want to highlight how compute partials relates to linearize in an implicit component. So here we have a quadratic component. Here's that equation that I was just telling you about, the quadratic formula here with the residual equation. We could solve it using the quadratic formula from our algebra two days, but we wanna solve this instead in kind of an implicit setup. Scrolling down to setup here, we see, okay, three inputs, one, two, three, A, B, C, and an output, which is X. But I wanna acknowledge that for an implicit component, an output is really a state variable. So here you can think of X as a state variable that we're converging to some value in the implicit component. If we take a look at the apply nonlinear, this is essentially the compute method for an implicit component. We see that it computes the residuals of X. So here residuals of X equals 
ax squared plus bx plus c. Again, this is the thing we're trying to get to zero. We're always trying to get these residual values as close to zero as possible. Now, like I mentioned before, we could solve it using solve nonlinear here in the quadratic formula, but that's not what I want to focus on. I want to focus on this linearized method. Here we have linearized. We have the inputs and outputs coming in, and then we have the partial derivative dictionary. Here we have partials of x with respect to a, b, and c. Uh, again, these are just coefficients. It's pretty straightforward to write down the, the partial derivative expression for them. But then we have partials of x with respect to x. Holy cow, if you're like me when I was first learning this, I would say, well, the change in x with respect to x is one, right? Because it's x changes by one, x changes by one. This is a ridiculous thing to look at. But ah, I, I, younger John and person watching this, it's actually the derivative of the residual equation with respect to x. So again, let me scroll up here. I'm gonna show you this residual equation again, ax squared plus bx plus c. If we were to differentiate this expression for x, we would see, okay, drop the two down, it becomes two ax plus b and then nothing. I scroll down here, okay, we see two ax plus b. Awesome, so partials of x with respect to x for an implicit component is just the residual equation partials with respect to the state variables. Again, this is that one main idea. If I can say, hey, for an implicit component to get the derivatives, this is what you need to do. I want you to remember it's all about the residual equation getting differentiated for the state variables. Now, this is a very simplistic case. These are all scalar values. It doesn't have to do with arrays. I don't want to cover that in this lesson. I don't want to cover those more complex topics in this lesson because I, I just want to point out this one kind of nugget of information and explain the idea of getting derivatives for implicit components. Other lessons in the docs as well go into more detail about getting implicit derivatives for more complex expressions. So all that being said, this lesson's relatively straightforward because it just has one true main takeaway, which is that for implicit functions, you simply need to compute the derivatives of the residual functions with respect to the inputs and outputs. It's not the outputs with respect to the inputs that we care about, but instead this idea of the residual function equation with respect to the inputs and outputs. I hope this was helpful. I wish I knew this in 2017 when I first started, but hey, we know it now, right? As always, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen. And guys, gals, and non-binary pals, thanks for watching. Bye.